What is up guys? We have so many options today when it comes to pen testing as far as what distribution we want to run. Well, let me show you another option that I didn't know uh, existed before. This is how to run a Windows Attacker VM. You can do this for uh, your you know, hack the box in your CTFs, right? You could do this for Active Directory, especially if really good use case there, or just your everyday testing if you so choose to. So let's get right into it. What's up guys, this is Ryan from Elevate Cyber. Now this isn't necessarily new, but it is kind of new to me. Uh, this is something that I discovered recently, the Commando VM, which is actually uh, an offensive VM created by Mandiant, uh, the company. So they actually created this um, basically a, a distribution, like a Windows distribution is how I would uh, describe it. Just as there is, you know, the Kali distribution of Linux, this is basically Mandiant's own distribution of Windows. They prepackaged a lot of the hacking tools that are uh, very useful um, and uh, made it really nice and easy to to install but uh, I remember looking at this maybe a couple years ago and uh, I was a little bit intimidated uh, I wasn't as knowledgeable back then uh, and it wasn't as technical back then but uh, if any of you guys are in a similar boat uh, definitely don't be it's not too difficult the trickiest thing is dealing with the annoying <laughs> Windows Defender getting that turned off because yeah you're gonna want to disable Defender completely because it's going to prevent you from downloading a lot of hacking tools, right? It's going to remove them from your system because they're hacker tools. And it's like, well, yeah, uh, that's what we're trying to do here. So in our case, we'll have to disable Windows Defender. I'll show you guys how to do that and um, some of the pitfalls that I ran into and how to, how to get it pretty consistently this way, at least work for me. Now, the VM that I'm using out of the gate is actually one of the ones from the Microsoft site, the IE user, the Microsoft Edge one. So let me just show you guys what I'm talking about and feel free to follow along at home to if you want to get this installed. That's the whole point of this video. Uh, if you want to attacker distribution you can use for Windows, which sometimes there is a good use case. Like if you're dealing with a Windows box, uh, it's really nice to have native PowerShell uh, rather than doing it through having to do it through Linux. So, but uh, anyways, how I got this VM to start with was I just searched um, Windows. I think I looked up something like uh, Windows 10 um, Edge VM or something like that. And you'll see that uh, there's virtual machines you can get um, for, uh, let's see, yeah, MS Edge here, choose a platform, virtual box, and then you can download it as a zip and it'll be an OVA file that you can import and it's already built for you. But of course, as far as getting um, this whole setup that I have here, this was an extra thing I did. So if you want to get this, then search um, Commando VM and there should be a GitHub link right here. And uh, basically what you want to do is um, don't download this right away. First thing you want to actually do, and I'll zoom in a little bit here for you guys on the smaller devices, is you want to follow these pre-install procedures. And they do a pretty good job of telling you what to do. There was an extra step that I had to do um, in my case. Maybe you won't. But uh, okay, so... For these VMs, what I noticed, there was no tamper protection. So you got to go into your Windows security. So if you search Windows security, you can see this come up here and you go to virus and threat protection on the left and then manage settings. So as you see, I just went ahead and disabled the extra stuff here. Um, really all you should need to disable is the real-time protection and... Uh, if you do have something here that says um, tamper protection, go ahead and turn that off as well. And that's just going to do it for right now. But to make it a permanent thing, we have to actually go and edit the group policy. So what we can do is search GP edit in here. We'll see edit group policy come up. And in particular, we need to go into computer configuration 
administrative templates, windows and components, and then it should s extended should be selected. Uh, select standard instead. And if you scroll down, here's where the discrepancy was for me at least. It says Microsoft Windows Defender Antivirus. In my case, it was actually under W for uh, Windows Defender Antivirus. Uh, the, the word Microsoft wasn't in there for me. So, you know, going here, go to real-time protection and where it says turn off real-time protection, double click on that and uh, change this from not configured to enabled, right? So we wanna enable the turn off real-time protection. I know it's kind of a little bit counterintuitive. We're enabling turning it off. <laughs> so that's basically what we wanna do, apply and okay. And after we do that, we need to reboot our system for the changes to take effect. And after the reboot happens, you know, up until this point, you can just follow, you know, the instructions on this readme here as well, if you're confused. We need to open our you know group policy editor again with GP edit and go back. This time we go to here where it says uh, turn off Windows Defender antivirus and uh, we'll switch that to enable to, to turn it off, right? And uh, from there, what we can do is uh, the extra step that I took, right? that wasn't on here, but was necessary for me actually was to add a, uh, a registry key to disable Windows antivirus because here's one way you can check. So if, uh, let's see, if I open a PowerShell window, I'll open the ISC, make this nice and easy for you guys. But uh, okay, yeah, so if I, have, if I have this open, right, you can actually verify everything by running a get MP computer status. So if I run this, right, you see antivirus enabled. So what I actually needed to do, even though like those settings were configured, what I needed to do is, well, for one thing, after I changed that, you saw me in the group policy change this to enable. I need to reboot my system. But uh, yeah, the extra thing I had to do on top of all of that was add a uh, registry key. So if I go to reg edit, so registry editor, and I'm already there, but I'll show you guys how I got here. So you wanna go, I'll start from the beginning. H key local machine, software, Policies, Microsoft, Windows Defender. And you click in where it says Windows Defender. And here is where you need to add um, a, registry, a registry key here. And the key that we want to add is going to be a DWORD 32-bit. And uh, it will say disable. This is like all one word. Disable anti-spyware. And then double click on the data here. Or double click on... The, the name here. We're gonna change the value from zero to one in hexadecimal and hit okay. Now when we reboot, uh, we should see that if I run get MP computer status again, it will show false. Uh, I don't wanna do that right now because I'm actually in the middle of a hack the box machine that I'm doing uh, on this thing. And uh, yeah, I'll have a video pretty soon on that um, showing you guys just doing a, uh, a hack the box machine entirely from this Windows uh, attacker box. So I think that'll be pretty cool. Definitely, it's always good to try, you know, you don't want to be too married to your tools, right? It's always good to challenge yourself uh, to use different tool sets and be able to still achieve the same end result. So definitely encourage you guys at home to go ahead and give this a try, right? Um, stand up a uh, attacker box on Windows. And, uh, you know, even if you don't want to go with this pre-install here, but yeah, this was the, this was the pre-install, uh, procedures, right? So as soon as we confirm that, uh, antivirus is, uh, disabled, what we can do is proceed with the installation. So we would go here and, uh, you click where it says code right here, you download the zip file and, uh, get it onto the system. You know, if you download it, you could download it from your system, right? At this point, 
uh, you should be fine to just download it on this system itself because we should have, you know, the antivirus disabled, so you shouldn't get any issues there. Chrome tries to stop you. You can just edit your Chrome settings. I didn't have that issue personally um, because it is a zip file. Sometimes it can get by. But, uh, yeah, once you do that, then you can just go ahead and unzip it, and you'll see that um, I might have it to show you. Let's see. If I go to my documents here. Yeah, it unzipped to Commando VM Master. And what you're looking for in particular is this install.ps1 file. It's right there in the, in the main folder once you click into it one time. But with that file, uh, this is the one that uh, they tell you what to run, right? You run unblock file and then install.ps1. And then you set your execution policy to unrestricted with the dash F flag. And then you can go ahead and execute this install.ps1 file and uh, then you just let it run. And this sucker takes, oh man, it took my computer, I want to say it took almost two hours to install everything. Like it'll keep re, you know, rebooting your machine. It'll prompt you for your, your password. That way it can uh, keep logging in every time it reboots for you. So you don't even have to uh, interact with it at all. It'll just, you know, you can go and I went for a long walk, had a cup of coffee and, um, I came back, it still wasn't done, and uh, yeah, just waited out a little bit, and it finished. But uh, as long as your antivirus is disabled, then it should be good to go. Now, what do you actually get as part of this package, right? Let's just take a look at this real quick. You get your Active Directory tools, of course, right? So, remote administration tools, uh, SQL Server, command line utilities, sys internals. You get some cool command and control stuff, so it comes shipped with Covenant, uh, WMI implant, WMI ops, which uh, those two I am not too familiar with. So that's pretty cool. Some new things to try out. Uh, a lot of developer tools, which I thought was, you know, I appreciated that very much. Now, the only thing about this Visual Studio is 2017. So depending on what, if you're trying to build cer certain things from the source, like I built Print Nightmare from source, I actually had to install uh, Visual Studio 2019. So just keep that in mind. But yeah, you will get Visual Studio code with it as well. And um, Sublime uh, came as well, even though it's not, maybe it'll be under something else, but yeah, as you see, it's Sublime as well. Uh, so you got a mass and spider foot. You got a lot of evasion stuff too, which is cool. Like this is definitely, you can tell, you can definitely see the use case here. Um, if you want to, if you want to interact with Windows systems, like this is where this thing's going to shine, obviously. Um a lot of exploitation stuff as well. You even got some of Fuzzy Sex uh, tools, which I think is pretty cool. He, if you're not aware of Fuzzy Sex, he's he's a blogger. He has a really good blog site on Windows exploitation and things like that. Go ahead and check out uh, his site for sure. Um, very useful for privilege escalation as well. One of the OG ones that I used to use back in the day, but it's pretty cool. We got some of his tools in here. And uh, I recognize some of these, uh, you know, like seatbelt for your uh, privilege escalation and things like that. Sharp up is like the executable version of, uh, I believe, like a power sploit type of thing. Could be wrong there. I, I know I have used this like once or twice. And then, uh, yeah, you got a lot of, you know, even juicy potato and things like that. So tons of tools, mostly focused around PowerShell and the Windows environment, no surprise there, right? But you also have a lot of uh, informa uh, information gathering tools that you might be used to, like, uh, you know, GoBuster, Nmap, of course, right? Sharp Hound, Watson, to look for um, your kernel exploits. So, yeah, really neat. And... Looks like they even have some Kali Linux related stuff. I'm not exactly sure what this is. I'll have to look into it. And uh, yeah, another nice thing, it comes with OpenVPN. And, uh, you know, I just click down here and I can connect to my, as long as I, you know, you put your uh, VPN connection file on your, on your system, then you can use it to connect really easily, really seamlessly. And uh, change everything to the dark theme too, which I thought was cool. I always like dark theme personally. But uh, yeah, as you see, just uh, a lot going on. I wouldn't really do 
Hashcat on here because the VM. I just run that on my host machine, but you do have that as well. And a bunch of extra utilities here. It, it has Burp Suite as well, which is uh, really nice. So, yeah, you can definitely, you know, with Nmap and Burp Suite and all that stuff, you can definitely use this stuff for uh, pen testing, uh, CTFs and things like that, and even real world if you wanted to. Um, another thing I thought was cool, we got the word list from Payload, all the things, one of my favorite repositories, uh, GitHub um, repositories. It, it, it's a great educational resource for learning. If any of you guys haven't checked it out, definitely go ahead and, Look that one up on GitHub. And, uh, of course, Seclist is, like, one of the most well-known word lists out there. So, yeah, I mean, it. from what I can see, it gives you everything you need and more out of the box. It's a full-blown distribution here. And uh, you even have uh, Chocolatey, which is a Windows package manager. That's what it uses. So makes it really easy to install any new packages as well. So if there's other packages you would like that this thing didn't come with, then you should be able to install it through Chocolatey, possibly. So, yeah, really cool stuff. Go ahead and check it out. Let me know what you guys think of it uh, down in the comments section. Uh, certainly something that I plan on at least uh, dipping my toes in. I'm not sure how much I'm going to use it. Uh, I could see myself using it, though, for certain Windows boxes, depending on what's going on. But, uh, like I said, always good to, you know, be, a, be capable of using multiple different tool sets. So yeah, hopefully this video helped you guys out uh, the ex uh, with the installation. I know that can be a little bit tricky. Uh, so if it has definitely subscribe to the channel, if you haven't already hit the like button as well to help out as many people as possible. And, uh, yeah, we are getting back to the regular scheduled content on my channel here. Uh, had a nice few days off after, you know, for my birthday and things like that back in town and back in business. So yeah, be, looking out for the regularly scheduled uh, content. And I'll see you guys in the next video. If you want to dive into some more technical content right now, I got the video on the screen for you. See you guys over there. Thanks for watching.